A Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the, uh, De the January 31st. Is it the 31st? Yeah, yesterday was the 30th. The January 31st, uh, fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Did I say November? January. January 31st. All righty. So uh, currently we've got all the uh, markets in the uh, red. But before we get to the markets, uh, look, I would absolutely love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 is our call in number. If you can't call in, we've got you all set. You can just send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, uh, please put radio show question like Aaron and Pat have done already. That make it a little bit easier for me to pick up your question amongst all of the emails out there. But let's go ahead and get this show started. Started on fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got the Dow trading down 520 points. Let's uh, flip to the charts out here. 522 points to be exact. That's one and eight tenths of a percent to the downside. S&P's off 52. NASDAQ down 110. Russell off 31. Semis down 50 or nearly 3 percent, two and three quarters percent. Uh, so all the uh, indices in the uh, red. Gold is uh, back a buck and silver's up nearly a nickel out here. Lights we crude off 80 cents. Natural gas down another nickel out there. Can't find a break there. And T-bonds are up 15 ticks, uh, trading out at 163.12. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside, it's Amazon up 161 bucks. That is a mover and a shaker. 9% charter communications up 24, about 5%. Riata Pharmaceuticals up 21. Decker's Outdoor up 17. So some big movers. To this downside, you've got Credit Acceptance Corp, the old GMAC, down 42 bucks or 9%. Booking Holdings, 41 bucks, 2%. AutoZone, 26, 2.5%. Google's off 20, a little over 1. First question that we'll go to coming in from John in the Tiger's Den. He was asking the question, is there a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal on the 30-minute chart for the ES Mini? The answer is, well, let's open up the 30-minute uh, chart out here. And the answer is not just, well, let me hit this function 5 key just in case. Uh, nope, not just yet. Now, excellent question, by the way, John. Now, here are... Three 30-minute time frame charts. The top panel is the 30-minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. The center panel is the 30-minute time frame chart for the NQ. And the bottom panel is for the Dow. So if you want to take a look at, and it's an excellent question, if you want to take a look at the markets, this especially this week here, and what's been working as we've been really just, we had gapped down, the markets gapped down on Sunday, and then it's for the it moved a little bit lower, fairly, uh, quite a bit lower. And then since that bottom that we saw, this was back here on uh, Monday, what we have seen is just simply a consolidation. Right now, price is trading right near the bottom of that consolidation pattern. Now, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator identified the bottom that was back on Monday, identified the top, identified last night's top, identified yesterday's bottom. Remember yesterday, we take a look at the markets and they were moving down. And I was being uh, suggesting to you all the signals here that said, this is suggesting we're going to see a rally. And we had one heck of a rally uh, shortly after we got off of the air out there. Right. And we had the roads momentum indicator signal as well that it kicked off earlier. So the question that John has posed is, do we have one now? The answer is no, we don't have one just this very second. Do I suspect that one will form by about 1.30? The answer would be very likely. Now, part of my tool, John, part of my indicator tool is it needs both a price element and it needs a time element. And if we take a look at the ES mini, the bar that formed that lowest reading using that relative strength indicator was at 1130. And I require five bars. So I require two and a half hours on a 30 minute time frame chart. Five bars on a 10 minute chart would be only 50 minutes out there. But I require time to pass because otherwise you could just do it, 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 it. Otherwise, the pattern just doesn't work. 
I've proven it. I've done back testing, all that type of stuff out there. And this is what works the best, what I found that works the best. So we may have it because price is made at a lower low. It's done it with less relative energy out there. But uh, so we don't have it here just yet. Maybe we get it uh, towards 2, 233. Maybe we don't get it today. And instead, maybe what we do is we see it sometime on Sunday. And if we get it on Sunday, and you should be anticipating, everybody should be anticipating some type of bounce. Now, that's because of the readings right now at 111 in the afternoon. I don't know what the readings will be at 4 o'clock this afternoon. But the reading that we're most uh, in interested in at this stage would be what is the uh, one day rate of change in the spot volatility index out here. So we just simply open up this chart. We keep things relatively simple by simple by just saying, look, if there is a one day rate of change greater than 10 percent, those are represented by all the blue arrows on my chart. You take a look at the print. Now, if you put up the ES mini out here, you'll really see it. I put up the S&P 500 on this chart because I know folks will watch the archives. They'll, they'll pause the archives. They'll go back, try to rebuild these same tools and charts out there that way, which is wonderful because that way you can go back and you can do your own work. You can see what I've done. Maybe you can improve upon it. That's really what we all do out here. Uh, and so in this case here, if you take a look at those blue arrows, you tend to see a bounce or bottom on that very next session. I'm not calling a bottom here, but there should be a bounce. What we've seen take place so far this week, there's no reason to suggest that it won't carry on into the following weeks. Now, John, you were asking the question, you know, hey, was there a bottom signal on the 30 minute chart for the ES mini? One of the other areas that I've been watching that you can watch as well, because price has bounced off of it a couple of times today or close to it. There's really two levels that I'm watching the breakout area inside the NQ on a 60 minute time frame. That's at the 90, 90, 0, 90, 0, 0, 1 level out here. That's at red horizontal line. Now, I don't have it extending all the way over, but it's still a key level of support. Now, what's interesting about this on the hourly time frame, John, is that when price got down there or very close to it about um, two hours ago, what we saw was a nice big old hammer candle in the NQ. So the NQ, it's not a pattern that is formed out here other than just simply pulling it back to breakout support. If we take a look at really the action from yesterday, same kind of a thing, uh, only the uh, bullish reversal candle uh, came. Well, let me get my cursor out here. Uh, you're welcome. I'll, sh I'll show you one other thing to be paying attention to. So an aggressive trader, uh, John, uh, you're trying to play a counter trend move out here. I, I, I would totally get it just simply looking at the signals and looking at the NQ. Because the question is, or should be at this stage here, you know, has the NQ fallen apart? So a nice little bullish uh, reversal signal right as price was up at support. We have that same pattern right now. The ideal spot to buy a hammer candle is about halfway into the wick you know, or a little bit lower out there. And that's where the NQ is trading. Now that is on the hourly time frame chart. Let's go up one level. One level would be to the two hour time frame chart inside the NQ. And this one worked just like magic here. When I say magic, price came right back to its breakout area, 90.16.25 and bounced off of it pretty nicely. Now that looked good. This was the bar that ended at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock, I apologize. But right now, price is trading below the bottom of that bullish structured profile. But this candle doesn't close till 2. So the NQ is at support. Let's watch those support levels for indications of what may come this afternoon. Right now, support has held. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we were taking a look at this chart before we went to the break. This chart being the top panel, being the S&P, the center panel, being the spot volatility. Next to that red line is its 50-day exponential moving average. That's at 1403. You can see we're above that. That's when there can be some real incarnation in the uh, market. That's really what we're seeing here today. And the question, though, the next question that popped up is, if you were long the uh, VIX through one of its products out there, you know, would you go ahead and close it out? Uh, and, and I think that question really was a result of saying, hey, look, we've got this one day rate of change right now to 23.18 percent out here. Um, and so we know if we have a one day rate of change greater than 10 percent, we will typically see a bounce or a bottom. Now, what I do, Maria, there, how I put that together is really with the, the, the chart that John had asked about up front, which was the 30 minute time frame chart for the ES mini. And for, for me, the signal comes when we see that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. We don't have that right now. So if you're asking me what I what I close it out, I don't have a reason to close it out. Uh, there may be other reasons, but from a charting pattern standpoint, I really need to see that signal generate, and then I need to see a bullish reversal candle uh, form out there. And to me, that would be the signal. Now, doing it that way, there's no way you're going to, in essence, uh, you know, sell the top or bottom tick out there. In, in my case here, I'm asking the market to prove itself to us. But we can see how well these patterns work. Do they work all the time? Um, no, that, unfortunately, they don't. But do they work enough so that you can understand what the market is communicating to you? The answer is absolutely, positively, yes. And this week has really been a perfect example of it. The last couple of days have been a perfect example of it. Last evening was a perfect example of it. If you were fortunate enough and you happen to be up at the uh, 10, uh, I'm sorry, the 8, 9 o'clock uh, time frame out here, what you would notice is that the uh, 20 hundred hours out here, price began moving higher, doing less relative energy. And then what did we see? Well, then you saw the cavalry arrive. Cavalry, meaning in this case here, sellers. They generated bearish engulfing candle on the ES mini, bearish sash 
on the NQ, uh, bearish engulfing and bear sash on the uh, Dow equity futures contract. So all three were given a signal that, um, you know, they didn't have the energy to sustain that move and it was time to move lower. Now move lower to where? That's where we begin to take a look at support levels out here. And in the case of these TAS market profiles, they form new levels as new information are being provided to us. Right now we can see that the uh, ES mini is trading below the bottom of its 30-minute uh, bullish structured profile. The NQ is test its trading below it, testing the bottom of that. And inside the uh, Dow, it's also trading below its bullish structured market profile. So, so Maria, to answer your question on a 30-minute basis out here, we don't have that signal that would say, hey, close out the trade. Here's where we might be cautious because a bounce might begin, and then we wait for that bullish reversal candle. So I hope that helps you out. But this is, folks, this is really what I've just given you as a formula to take a look at the markets, either this afternoon or Sunday evening uh, when they open. Uh, but of course, that all depends on what the end of day reading is for the spot volatility. If it doesn't, now look, the, the Rosemont Dominicator um, works regardless of what the spot volatility index is. I'm just trying to give you the double whammo, so to speak. Uh, but if you see that pattern forming on a 30 minute uh, time frame out there, um, it's telling you what the market's intentions are, whether or not the buyers are going to be able to pull that off or not. Well, that you just have to uh, wait and see. So I hope that that answers your question, M, with regard to the spot volatility index and really just trying to put that together with everything. Now, yesterday, one of the other tools that we were looking at was the New York Stock Exchange. And inside the New York Stock Exchange, the same pattern is present right now. What's that pattern? Well, take a look at price here. We can see that the New York Stock Exchange, we're using a line chart, means we're just looking at closing prices. But we can see we're at a new lower low, a, lo a new lower low from that on the close on uh, Monday out here. But if you take a look at the center panel out here, maybe hard to realize, uh, hard, to, hard to visualize, but the reading in the advanced decline oscillator, January 27th, minus 178.38. You can see we're at 172.33 right now. So what we have going on here is this divergence, the divergence with seeing lower price in New York Stock Exchange, but not a newer low inside the advanced client oscillator. Now, again, it's an end of day reading, but right now at 123 in the afternoon, there is a divergence. So, John, back to the 30 minute chart, the road's momentum indicator. If you do see one kick in, then the larger market breadth is saying that the New York Stock Exchange doesn't have the energy it needs to really push lower and that this could be really not a false break to the downside, but that it's kind of like that ball if you're standing on it in a pool and get ready for it to just simply, you know, bounce to the upside out here. So we watch that. Now, the difference between today and yesterday, and I didn't mention this yesterday, when we we're looking at the same chart, at least I don't believe we mentioned it. In fact, I'm sure we didn't mention it yesterday. When we we're looking at the same chart was because the condition was actually set up more so for me to say, uh, folks, this means something. Now, there's a, a separate divergence here. And another reason why I would say to somebody holding on to a long VIX trade at this moment, you don't also don't have that signal to exit it. And what is that? Well, if you look at the bottom panel out here, this is also the uh, this is the spot volatility index. And what you can see is that this is actually at a higher high right now. Now, I'm not looking at the bar chart. Uh, the bar chart on Monday, you know, might have made a higher high than where we're at right now. I'm really just looking at the closing prices when I put these tools or use these tools together. So we have kind of opposing divergent patterns out here. But again, if we see the spot volatility start to drop lower, it'll end up being below that level. But the chances are we're still going to see price in New York Stock Exchange, the upper panel, be below Monday's low out there. So uh, this would be another set of tools that I would be looking if you're trying to time the markets, let the market give you more information, not just focus on one thing, but just have a couple of you know two or three different things that you can look at to kind of help play the liars poker game so to speak with regard to what are the markets really doing out there so I hope that answers your question i know we've had a couple of other questions that have come in so let me go to uh those give me a, a second out here to get rid of some of this uh, junk and uh um, oh, I didn't get rid of enough of it. But let's go to AR's question. This is Aaron's question. Aaron says, uh, could you please look at the gold sector or GDX? Any valid topping patterns out here? So 
Um, how do I want to approach that? Um, I'm just wondering where, which, let me do this here. Let me just, uh, I've got a number of things going on on my screens. Let me just set that up to go to this chart here. So how do I get there? Give me a second. Sorry about that, folks. I thought I had this all set, but I will momentarily, or, or will I? Uh, yeah, I think I will. There we go. Okay. So you're asking to go take a look at the uh, GDX as an example. So let's pull over this set of charts here because we have all kinds of time frames where we can take a look at the mining sector. So the GDX, let's first get the uh, symbol in here. And uh, let's not start with our 30 minute time frame chart. Let's come to the daily time frame and uh, generate its signal. So in the uh, GDX for its daily time frame out here, here is what we know. Aaron, what I, what I, is, you're asking, is there a valid topping pattern out here? Inside the GDX on a, a daily time frame, there would be the A to B equals CD pattern uh, that is out here. I can't draw that in on, with this set of tools, but that is the valid topping pattern. Right now, what Price is doing is just testing Stevie's green line. That's a resistance level. It's at about 28.98. This is trading at 29.01. Let me look at the weekly time frame chart because you said valid topping signal. You didn't tell me what time frame. If you were to ask me, Aaron, is there a valid topping signal for the weekly time frame? Oh, we'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off 532, S&P down uh, 54 points. We were looking at the GDX for Aaron, and we were at the uh, weekly uh, time frame chart out here. And so, Aaron, on the weekly time frame chart, as I mentioned, I wasn't really paying attention to my clock out here. You've got the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. And ever since that, which was back in the August time frame, what we've really seen is just simply a sideways move with price trading in between the top and the bottom of that profile. And the top of the profile is 30 and the bottom of the profile is 26. So really what you've seen is a sideways consolidation. You do have that uh, weekly topping pattern. On a monthly basis out here, we don't have a uh, topping pattern whatsoever. We've got some bottoming patterns out here. Prices, if price is going to pull back, its ultimate level of support out here right now would be Stevie's green line. That's between 25.55 and 26.63 uh, out there. So that's what I see. If I look at a quarterly chart for this, do I have anything? I've got a top that formed out here with a TD setup nine count pattern, uh, but that was way back in 2011 out there. So, uh, Aaron, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the G. D X. Let's go uh, take a look at our next question. This is coming in from uh, Pat. Pat says, uh, what are your indicators and DeMarc numbers saying about Qualcomm? So let's go take a look at Qualcomm. Q-C-O-M is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Again, no time frame. So uh, let's begin by taking a look at the uh, daily time frame. So the daily time frame right now, Pat, uh, you don't like, uh, if you're long Qualcomm, you don't like the mere fact that yesterday was a hammer candle. You liked that. What you don't like is the fact that price is trading below that level as we speak right now. On a daily basis, price is below the bottom of its daily profile. And what that would suggest to you, Pat, is that price is likely headed to 77.59. That's the message coming on the daily time frame. Uh, 77.59 is the area where it broke out. So that's our price target here. If we look at a weekly time frame for Qualcomm, what we're going to see is that price had been moving higher, doing a less route of energy. Last week, what you generated was a bearish reversal candle. The structure of that profile was bullish, meaning the center line, which which is at 89.85 was closer to the bottom at 87.72 versus the top at 94.11. Price is below the bottom of that bearish structure, bullish structured profile out here. That says lower price. Where? Well, shoot, I won't get that. You know, the breakout level is 51.75. I, I would have to resort back to the daily time frame for signals. Uh, but the weekly does have a uh, topping pattern, a confirmed topping pattern, and you've had follow through this week. On a monthly basis out here, as we take a look at uh, Qualcomm, what do we have? You've got wave number seven. That's letter G on my screen out there. That's also a topping pattern. Now here, what Qualcomm is saying is that support is at about 78.16. That's Stevie's green line. That's why I say about, because that number is going to change. So in the 78-ish area is where you have a level of support, Pat. So that's what the indicators are describing to you and I with regard to Qualcomm for its daily, its weekly, and its monthly time frame. Mark writes in and he says, uh, Steve, I know we are looking for a bullish candle to make a trade in coffee. Well, yes, that's true. I'm looking at Joe. Does today's candle look like a bullish reversal candle and would warrant to buy? Please advise. So let's go take a look at this for um, one of our subscribers out here. Uh, give me a moment to just populate this and get to those uh, charts out here. And we'll go take a look at the uh, coffee contract versus take a look at the ET which is Joe, because we really want that signal coming from the underlying instrument. And so let's go see what the March contract for coffee is showing us out here. So we'll pull this over and uh, see what we see. Now, one of the things that we will see, so at the moment, Mark, uh, uh, it is a bullish engulfing candle, small bodied candle uh, from yesterday. So let's take a look at it. And what we need to see coffee do to generate this confirmed A to B equals CD pattern out here, that would be the pattern that's in play, a one to two A to B equals CD. What you want to see the coffee contract do is close it. Now, this is such a small bodied candle that it's hard to say that there's, it's, it's not let me do it, earn it. Um, I don't know why, but uh, it's got to be somewhere right around 102. Um, you know, a close above that will, would be, to answer your question, if this were the close, that is the bullish reversal candle that would confirm the one to two, or really which it would ends up being a Gertley buy pattern. Now, what you got to be careful about, Mark, if you're going to go ahead and take this trade uh, as we speak right now, and I'm going to go try to pull something else up if I can find it. I think that I can. The question is, where did I put it? And if I don't see it, I will do it during the break. 
So right now I'm not seeing it, so I may have to do that during the breakout. Well, actually, I have another way of doing it. I've got another way for us to go take a look at it. So here you've got the uh, you've got the bullish engulfing candle now. What I was about to say is that you may only get a counter trend rally up to Stevie's red line in the 107 ish area out here. Well, what I want to do is I can uh, let me just change this to a 30 minute time frame chart out here. So let's do this. So we've got KC03 20. And then I'm going to change this from 60. This is 60 minute time frame chart, but we'll go ahead and let it populate. Why isn't it uh, populating? That's the question out here. Just maybe too many things that are running in the uh, background. So um, what? Here we go. So here's the 30 minute time frame, or 60 minute. So this is a dangerous thing, Mark, in taking the trade. Yes, the daily has a bullish reversal candle. But now, now, now was my intention was to go to the 30 minute time frame chart, but the 60, everything happens in life for us, not to us, right? So if we take a look at this, what I want you to see is that. The 60 minute time frame, and I realize this one, you've got a TD nine count bottom. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Here's your bullish piercing candle. And then what price has done is it ran right up into resistance. Resistance was 102.95. You really have two levels of resistance 103.40. These are your TD nine breakdown areas. So 103.40 and 102.95. So now what I would do is I would say, no, right now, as of 136 in the afternoon, even though the daily chart shows a bullish candle, resistance has failed on the short term time frame. So picture it like this. If we're going to see some type of change in trend, the one thing that you need to see is you need to see resistance levels fail on the shorter term time frame. That's why I was going to go to the 30 minute chart, but we don't need to. We've got really great, a really great set of bottoming patterns on the 60 minute chart which then just simply took price up to resistance. And since then, it has rejected that. That doesn't mean that it won't form a bottom. But what you don't have here, and especially with regard to the ETF JO versus trying to trade the coffee contract, the, in the coffee contract, you've got a lot more outs because of the number of hours that it trades. In JO's case, you really don't have that. So in summary, do you have the bullish reversal candle? Yes. On a short term time frame, we'll use a 60. Do we have any breakout of resistance? The answer there is no. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and also for being a subscriber. That was for Mark. Uh, I don't see any other questions. We've got about 30 seconds before we go to the breakout here. But uh, I would love to hear from you at 877 927 6648 or certainly in the den. You can go ahead and make a request. Uh, just simply go ahead and post either a private or public message. Right now, we've got the Dow off 565, S&P down 57, the NASDAQ down 133, Russell's off 33 points out there. If we take a look at our day, daily profiles, weekly profiles before we go into the break. Shoot the Russell 2000 below its weekly profile. The Dow could be targeting 28.044. Dow futures contract. You can see that by the end of the day. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So when we began the show, we were looking at the 30-minute uh, time frame charts here for the equity futures contracts, and the question was about the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. Um, we took a look at it, and now we have now what the 30-minute charts have done is they have triggered that signal. There's been enough time. We've got the uh, and the time just simply allows us to really let traders, both buyers and sellers. I, I've just found that it works the best. I've I've tried it. I've back tested it with so many different time frames out there. Uh, this one has the highest probability of a success rate. So uh, so we know the price is pushing lower, doing less relative energy. The top that formed last night, the exact opposite of that pattern, just like last night. It was a bearish reversal candle that confirmed that uh, top. Here we'd be looking for the bullish reversal candle. So that's all you've got to do, folks. It, it, you can make trading, investing, or let's just call it timing the markets relatively simple out here. It's a whole heck of a lot better than everybody else that says you can't time the markets. You know what that means? It really just means they're lazy. Not you, okay? Because, and I'm referring to the folks where this is their profession. Just think about it like this. It's a logical question. Uh, you don't even have to think about it like this. I am sure that in your profession, you spend all kinds of time always trying to better yourself, learn more about whatever it is you do, find some way to, um, it's in the stock market, that's the same thing. So when I see a whole series of professionals sit there and tell you and I that they can't time the markets, to me it just says they're just absolutely lazy because they can be timed. For goodness sakes, I've shown for the last two years, two years, by having a third party track my uh, signals out there. Uh, in 2018, you know, was the number one. 2019, I was number two by one and a half points in the S&P 500. I get it. Right now, I'm still number one out there. Um, and so, it, 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 and I don't say that to impress you. That's It's the point is, that and I used to get emails from folks saying, you know, why don't you guys do competitions, this, that, or the other thing? Finally, I said, you know what? I should have my signals tracked by by a third party out there. That's uh, the folks at Timer Digest. And the proof is that markets can be timed. Do I get everything right? Are you kidding me? No. No, I did many times doing the live show here and providing you with guidance on what the markets are communicating. They don't always work out, but they surely work out plenty more 
than they uh, don't out there. So uh, don't be don't don't buy into that stuff. Just these tools are relatively easy to learn, and I don't make any secrets about it. If you're a subscriber, even during the show, we talk about stuff like that. If you're a subscriber, you got access to a workshop, and you go back there, and you can re-listen to it. You can figure it out. You send me emails. We talk on the phone. Whatever it is, my, I want you to be successful. You know, really, you think about it. it. That is our role in the world, isn't it? Isn't our role really for each of us out there? If we all lived our lives like this, it's the reason I do this show. Isn't the real role to be able to help those that are doing poor to do well and those that are doing well to do better? And we just simply translate that information, you know, through stock patterns out here in the stock market and how you can really time these markets. Anyways, uh, enough about that. There's no more questions that uh, that I've got out here. So it just kind of felt, hey, this is just simply the ability to simply, you know, go. Oh, I take it back. We do have a question out here. This one is from Hector and the fuel injectors. Happy Frosty Friday out here. As goes Apple, so does the Dow. Can you please give us your near term outlook for Apple? Hector and Patty. So, uh, yeah, let's go take a look at uh, Apple. Let's pull this uh, chart. Looks at, let's look at it for multiple time frames out here. In the case of Apple, it was stretched. Price was moving higher, doing less relative energy. I don't have the bearish reversal candle, believe it or not, just yet. We had a little uh, doji candle out here when it made its high. Um, here's what I would say. Because of this pattern and price is below Stevie's green line, uh, Hector, where Apple is headed to, the next place where Apple is headed to is 305.16, or could be where it's headed to, 305.16. But take a look at Apple versus the market, because you, you made a statement here. Well done, by the way. Uh, you say, you know, as Apple goes, so goes the Dow. So we're going to go take a look at the two charts. And here's what I want you to notice. What I want you to notice is where did Apple trade to on Monday? versus where it's trading right now. Monday was a lower low. We don't even have to go back and take a look at the Dow. Well, let's look at the Dow equity futures contract. What do we have going on here today? Just so I don't have to change things out here. Where are we at today versus Monday in the markets out here? We're at a lower low. So Hector, there's a divergence. And you're saying as Apple goes, so goes the Dow. Maybe you are prophetic out here. You're prophesizing. Because you don't have a lower low when it comes to Apple. But still back to Apple, because the roads went to indicator signal out here, because of price moving lower, odds favor that what Apple is doing is on its way down to 305.16. Now, even though we've got that roads went to indicator signal, no bearish reversal candle, if we did see price close below the bottom of that box, 305.16, Apple would be signaling to you and I a change in trend. A change in trend to where? Well, shoot, let me actually populate this chart out here. I just realized it wasn't popular. Let's get all the indicators. What, what did I do? Didn't mean to do that, but oh, you got to hit the right button. There we go. Oh, Apple also, oh, what Apple did also had was wave number seven. That is letter G on my uh, screen out here. So if Apple closed below 305.16, its levels of support below that breakout level, 297.16. Hector, if you're going to ask me, where is it that you would buy Apple on a dip? It would be between 297 and 305. Now, that's what this is showing us. Let's go take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here for Apple. What is it doing? Well, from a weekly basis, no topping signal. And price is still above Stevie's green line. Apple has been trading above Stevie's green line. This is the weekly chart that we're looking at. Uh, the last time that it was below the oscillator and change line was May 31st of 20. 19, May 31st of 2019. You don't think that uh, green line, the oscillator and change line, is going to be an important intermediate term level to be watching inside of Apple? That's at 303.25. Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. Now, this is going to be the end of the month. What are we taking a look at at the end of the month out here? Any kind of topping signals? Well, in the case of the uh, Apple, uh, the answer is no. No topping signal that's been confirmed. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy out here. But there's no signal at all, uh, Hector, on the even longer term time frame out here to suggest that uh, Apple's formed some kind of a major top. And if we come down, take a look at the uh, quarterly, well, that really wouldn't be coming down. That would be moving higher. Do we have a topping signal or topping pattern here? The answer is no. Apple's got its mojo. So to summarize out there, you say as Apple goes, 
goes, so goes the market. Well, what you've got out here, Hector, is you've got yourself a good old fashioned uh, uh, divergence. Now, interestingly enough, let's just simply take this one step further for Hector. And uh, because we could take a look at the uh, volumes a little bit easier, when we come take a look at these charts. So is Apple pushing into that swing point with volume or with lighter volume? Because it certainly has tested that swing point, that swing point being January 27th, the top of which is 311.77. We're at 311.53 right now, so we're still trading inside it. The volume today is, uh, what is it, 29, yeah, 29 million? And what did we do a few days ago? 54 million. Mathematically speaking, it's coming into that swing point with lighter volume. Maybe all the reason to expect some type of bounce. May not be today, but Sunday slash Monday. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So we're going into the uh, home stretch here. Who do you think is going to win? Kansas City or San Fran? Now, San Fran has uh, played in the Super Bowl down in Miami a couple of different uh, times out there, and uh, both times they have uh, snatched victory. So now they played, actually, they, the last time they played in this stadium, back then it was called J. Robbie, J. Robbie Stadium. So uh, they're playing in that same stadium. So I think they think they've got a little bit of, uh, of luck 
down here in uh, Florida. So we'll see how that turns out. Meantime, out here, um, well, we began, I did the uh, 1 p.m. update. We were taking a look at the uh, weekly time frames. We were noticing now this is the first weekly close below the prior week. That's an indication of a, a change in trend or lower prices to come. That doesn't mean that we won't see bounces. In fact, you and I were anticipating a bounce. And just like we saw Monday and Tuesday, um, they should be pretty healthy bounces. Like we're seeing healthy declines, we should also see healthy bounces. Now, we're showing you the 30-minute time frame chart out here, which has operated really well this week at identifying tops and bottoms. And right now, you've got another one of those potential bottom signals. There's four minutes left in this 30-minute bar. Uh, we see hammer candles present currently for the ES Mini and the NQ and uh, close, but no cigar just yet inside of the uh, Dow. But if we do get a hammer candle out here, that's your first indication of a uh, bounce inside of the uh, markets, one that uh, could actually find some legs. Watch that end of day reading in the spot volatility index, folks. Right now it's up 22.3% trading out at 1895. Any close with a one-day rate of change greater than 10% truly increases those odds, those odds of a nice bounce. Could be a bottom, a nice bouncer bottom. Back to that New York Stock Exchange out here. Um, again, still giving us signals of a potential bounce as well. So folks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being here all week long. Stay tuned. My favorite polar bear, David White. He'll be up next. And after that, Tom O'Brien to take us on home. And I'll see you again on magical, magnificent, marvelous Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been...